Ask any Fortnite pro who the hardest player to fight is, and nine times out of ten, they will say Vino. He lands at Grand Glacier, and after getting an easy first elim, he gets shot attempting to fight the boss. Now, Vino's immediate reaction here is to create some space to fight from, but strangely, he doesn't place a cone in any of these boxes. Now, the opponent seeing this thinks he has an opening where he can slide a cone or a ramp into this box while he wall replaces, so he starts spraying the wall. However, this is just a trap. Vino knows that the other player is either going to swing his pickaxe or assault rifle the wall, so as soon as the opponent gets close enough, he places a cone straight away to ensure he doesn't get ramped over, and then immediately does a top row edit, catching the opponent off guard and hitting him for 56 damage. Now, after resetting the wall, it's weak, so Vino instinctively edits a cone to block any potential return fire from the opponent. Now that he has this HP advantage, he edits out the right-hand side of his box and sprint builds up some ramps to gain height, and then the other players just decided to disengage, so he's easily able to chase him down and wipe him out. And most of Vino's fighting style is made up of these very simple but effective mechanics. Later in this match, Vino has just captured his combat cache and he sees someone nearby. He immediately switches to metal since he has extra in his box and it's the strongest material, and then he sprint ramps above the opponent to give himself the height advantage. From here, he can see that the other player has left his back wall open, so he drops down and attempts to place two cones to take this build piece from behind. However, this is unsuccessful as the other player has created a second box. Since the opponent has just placed this wall, Vino tries to break through with his AR and grab the middle wall between the two boxes. However, he misses the timing and is left in a really awkward bad position. Understanding that the opponent could just edit on him and hit him, he jumps and edits the cone underneath him to block any shots. He places a wall to his left before creating more space backwards. Now this wall here is very important, remember it. This makes the opponent think he's the opportunity to shoot, so of course he edits the wall in an attempt to shoot Vino, but he is, as you can predict, blocked by the cone, so he resets. Now Vino, knowing the opponent's wall has freshly just been edited and reset and is now weak, he goes over the top of the builds and drops down to the important wall that he placed earlier. He does this carefully, however, However, placing a wall in front of him to block any edit from the opponent's box and a cone to stand on to ensure he doesn't get ramped over. This blocking off of angles is a trend we'll see throughout most of his fights. So he edits through the important wall, and in this situation, most people would try to replace the opponent's freshly reset weak wall. However, Vino does not do this. Instead, he simply breaks it with one pickaxe swing and hits a 78 damage shot to give him the HP advantage. It seems like wall replacing would be better in this situation, but sometimes when enemies' walls are so weak that you can break them in one pickaxe and it's clear that they're not picking attention, you can get some really easy opening damage this way. Now that he has the advantage, Vino also doesn't just run into the box and try to finish the fight quickly, as he could still die and throw the entire game. And since his fight will attract a lot of third parties with snipers, he quickly boxes himself up to ensure he's safe before continuing to pressure the other player. However, this opponent tries to run away with a grapple blade, so he does a slight little jump on top of the box to give himself the best sight lands and hits an absolute bang of a snipe. But this isn't the only way that Vino uses the snipe in fights. He actually uses it to box fight. Vino spawns an enemy box stop using a big pot to heal, so he knows that he already has the advantage in this fight. Now, since there's 44 players up in the sixth zone, there's a ton of people who could third party this fight, so he actually creates two boxes on approach to ensure he doesn't get shot in the back. Vino then uses the sniper to no scope the wall, and in the same action, places a wall behind him that he missed. This snipe deals 110 structure damage, meaning now he can break the wall in two pickaxe swings instead of four. However, he fails to steal the wall. However, his muscle memory here is what's really important. Notice how before he goes to edit, Vino pulls out his shotgun. This means that if he fails to steal the wall, his attempt to edit it will instead fire the shotgun, which will weaken the wall so that it can be replaced by a single pickaxe. This means that with the sniper no scope and then the shotgun shot in combination, he manages to do two wall replaces in around two and a half seconds. But apparently the opponent is German or French, so he fails to steal it for a second time. But this time, rather than pressing his shotgun button before editing, he switches to his assault rifle and does the exact same thing, this time successfully. This means that Vino was able to get three wall replace attempts done in under 4 seconds, while being fully protected with his crosshair aimed at the opponent in case they edit. You may think this doesn't sound very impressive, but watch this from the opponent's perspective. He then manages to get a ton of damage by just spraying, so since the opponent has blocked off this angle with a bunch of ramps, he moves around to the side and switches up the angle that he's attacking at, again ensuring he's completely protected. However, at this point he sees the opponent attempt to run, and this has not gone well for any of the other players so far, so Vino does something that's incredibly simple, but that most players are yet to have in their muscle memory, a sprint jump. Now, since jumping out of a box on a cone is a very precise action that requires you to stand almost completely in the top of the cone that's inside of your box, and have some forward momentum, 
momentum, you can actually just do a small sprint jump, which increases the height of your jump by around a quarter of a tile. Since you can also edit while sprinting, Venu can sprint, jump, and edit the top of the box to get outside of it, and then build a ramp to land on to quickly elevate himself up two tiles, which allows him to finish off the running player. Now, if you want to practice any of these mechanics, I've just released my first UFN map called the 1v1 Practice Hub, which has specific wall replacing and peace control scenarios you can practice against other players. Or you can just do classic build fights, bot fights, realistic zone wars, clutch fights, aim duels, some zero world practice, or any combination of these through our unique voting system. You can use the code that's on screen or search 1v1 Practice Hub or Resub to find it, and I'm following back some people on Twitter who favor the map. So let me know how you like it and if there's anything I can prove on it. One thing you may notice is that Vino always carries the Flowberry Fizz instead of the Grapple Blade. This not only allows him to carry two heals and mobility, but it frees up an inventory slot for a sniper. During this cash cup, I'm pretty sure his accuracy of the sniper was like over 80%. Please don't fact check that though. But that's not the only reason the Flowberry Fizz is worth carrying. Vino starts his fight by sliding two cones into an opponent's box from beneath before going for the wall replace where he's able to open the fight with a 73 damage shot. He does a bit of an awkward peek after this to hit another 28 damage shot, but is chunked back in return and now has to heal. Since the opponent has distanced himself, Vino takes this time to pop a few ticks of the Fizz. Now, when you jump and slide with the Flowberry effect, your movement speed is increased. Most people just use this to rotate. However, here, as Vino is falling, he no-scopes the wall and then slides with his pickaxe out in an attempt to swing through the wall and get into the opponent's box. Unfortunately, this was a metal wall and it was a little bit too strong to go through in this one phase, but after finishing up this fight, he does this later in the game. Now, in the end game, he cracks a player who's flying through the sky using a grapple blade, and this player boxes up on low ground. He places two cones and slides on them while timing his two burst shots to break through the wall and slide straight into the box, picking up an easy elim. If you're the opponent in this situation, this is incredibly difficult to counter because you have almost zero time to react. But you also don't necessarily need the Flowberry effect as Vino didn't do it on that 10th elim, and he didn't do it on this 6th elim in the game either. However, the Flowberry effect makes it much easier because you'll be moving faster, which means you have a much higher likelihood of actually going through the wall. Plus, you can do this from higher and you won't take fall damage. Now, most of these players are relatively good. However, in some early games, you will face some not so great players. And Vino uses a few ways to bait these players to pick up absolutely free elims. In this game, he lands at snooty steps and after clearing out a few players of spawn and grabbing the mythic hammer pump and the medallion, he drops down to the vault. Now, it's really common for players to push here for the additional loot. So he blocks off every exit as you always should. And he hears some footsteps of a player sneaking around him. This is where he makes the big brain play of just shooting the floor. The opponent, thinking there's a fight down here, starts to break through the builds and of course is met by a big pump shot. And this isn't the only funny bait he uses either. Later in the match, Vino notices a player boxed up in a 2x2x2 box on a combat cache. Now, I don't know about you, but this smells of a player who does not want to fight and probably is not that good. Uh, editing Reese here, I checked, this guy follows me on Twitter, I'm sorry. Seeing this, Vino immediately ramps onto height and pulls out his cone to see if the opponent is sitting in one of these cones. Now, if you didn't know if there's a player holding edit inside a cone, then there'll be a lock symbol on your crosshair and you can easily identify where they are. But after not finding him in there, he drops down to a sidewall and starts swinging. He opens this with a nice 40 tag to get some damage onto the other player, and given the obvious visuals, he feels safe enough just to jump straight into the box and end the fight quickly. Both players drop down onto the lower layer, and the opponent is positioned right up against this wall in this corner. Now this is a telltale sign that he's going to do a peanut butter edit peek and go for a shot, so Vino just moves towards the wall on his left. Now this blocks part of his body from the opponent's view, giving him a much better right-hand peek. If he actually moves around halfway back into the box, he'll be completely hidden from the opponent's perspective, and he'll actually still be able to see them. From here, he just repeatedly tries to bait the opponent into an edit, knowing he has the better peek and the HP advantage. He just keeps taking out his pickaxe, fake swinging and cancelling it by switching back to his shotgun, and he does this three times until the other player eventually just edits on him, and he's able to outtrade him from the better angle. Hopefully some of these fighting tips were helpful, and don't forget to check out the 1v1 Practice Hub.